Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Getting Started with the ZMB3000 Duplexer Measurements. In this presentation, we'll show step-by-step -step how to make the most important duplexer measurements using a Rodian Schwartz ZMB3000 series vector network analyzer. This presentation assumes a basic understanding of duplexers, their characteristics, and how they're measured. If you're unfamiliar with this topic, or if you'd like a brief review, you might want to watch the presentation Understanding Duplexers before beginning this presentation. Let's start with an overview of duplexers. Duplexers are three-port RF devices that enable a single antenna to be used simultaneously for transmitting and receiving. Duplexers are used when the frequency separation between transmit and receive is small, typically on the order of hundreds of kilohertz to low tens of megahertz. To do this, duplexers are constructed using a series of filters, almost always one or more band reject or notch filters, and often band pass filters as well. There are four main things we want to measure about a duplexer. The first and the most important is the attenuation of the transmit frequency at the receive port, since insufficient attenuation can lead to receiver descents or even damage. We want to measure this in the opposite direction as well, that is from receive to transmit. The insertion loss at the nominal port frequency should be as low as possible, and the isolation between the transmit and receive ports is also important. Finally, each port should have a good impedance match at that port's nominal frequency. All of these are usually measured using a vector network analyzer. Duplexer measurements using the Rodian Schwartz ZMB3000 vector network analyzer are standard S parameter measurements. Signals are both sourced and measured by the ZNB. Note that S parameter measurements are a standard feature on the ZMB3000 and don't require any special licenses, options, etc. As with most VNA measurements, an appropriate calibration should be performed before making these measurements. In the interest of time, we won't be covering calibration in this presentation. Duplexer measurements are all one or two port measurements, and unused duplexer ports should be terminated. Note that it's also possible to use a four port ZMB3000 and have all of the duplexer ports connected to and terminated by the ZNB. Once the measurement is configured, it will run automatically and continuously with results updated on screen after every sweep. There are three basic duplexer measurements. The first is the attenuation between each port and the antenna port, which provides information on the notch depth, bandpass characteristics, and insertion loss of the duplexer. The second is the isolation between the high and low ports. The third is the amount of reflected power at each port, quantified as standing wave ratio or return loss. The verse two of these are transmission measurements, that is, S21 or S12 measurements. And the third is a reflection or S11 measurement. In the remainder of this presentation, we'll cover each of these measurements step by step. The first step is selecting the type of S parameter measurement. This is done by going to Trace Measurement S Parameters. For attenuation measurements, such as out of band rejection, insertion loss, and isolation, either S21 or S12 should be chosen. And for SWR or return loss, choose either S11 or S22. We also need to configure the frequency range for the measurement. This can be done under the Stimulus menu. Frequencies on the ZMB2000 can be entered in two ways, either as start and stop frequencies, or as a center frequency and span. Note that start and stop frequencies of 1 GHz and 3 GHz are the same as a center frequency of 2 GHz and a span of 2 GHz. There are several other parameters that can be configured if needed. Under the Power Bandwidth Average button, the generator or source power can be changed. This same menu provides access to the IF Bandwidth setting, 
which defines the width of the filter used to measure power at each sweep point. Lowering this value will reduce noise, but will also increase sweep time. Many duplexers have very high rejection or attenuation within the notch frequency, in which case lowering this value and or increasing source power might be helpful. And the number of sweep points can also be changed. This is the number of discrete measurement points within the defined frequency range. Note, however, that in many cases, these parameters can be left at their default values when making measurements of duplexers. To select how results are displayed, choose Trace and then Format. For duplexer measurements, results are most often shown either as dB magnitude for attenuation and isolation measurements, or as standing wave ratio when measuring impedance match. We'll provide examples of both formats in this presentation. Markers are a convenient way to analyze traces and obtain numeric results, and these can be accessed via Trace Marker. Up to 10 markers can be placed, and the numeric value for each marker is also shown on screen. In addition to manually placing markers, two special marker functions, Marker Search and Target Search, can be used to place markers on specified values, such as the trace max or min, user-defined values, etc. Another useful analysis feature is limit lines, which check for values which exceed a threshold within a given frequency range. This function is enabled under trace line. The threshold values are entered in the define limit line dialog, and these can be either a single value or it can be broken up into multiple segments. If the limit check switch is enabled, a message will be displayed on limit violation, and the violating segments of the trace will be displayed in a different color. Now let's look at measurements, starting with attenuation. Recall that attenuation is measured between either the low or high port and the antenna port. On the ZMB3000, this is an S21 measurement. As mentioned earlier, the unused port should be terminated. The most important goals of this measurement are verifying that the band reject or notch frequency on one port matches the receive frequency on the other port, as well as verifying that the notch has sufficient attenuation, typically 70 to 100 dB. We'll look at several examples of this over the next few slides. Another duplexer characteristic that can be derived from this measurement is insertion loss at the port's own frequency. Normally, this will be a couple of dB or less. For duplexers which incorporate a band pass filter, the pass band frequency and attenuation can also be verified in this way. The pass band should be centered around the port's frequency, and there should be at least moderate attenuation, low tens of dB, outside of the pass band. Our first set of attenuation measurements are on a band reject only duplexer. If we measure S21 from the low port to the common port, we see a very clear and very deep notch at the high side frequency, here 467 MHz. Measuring from high to common, we see that there is a very similar notch present at the low side frequency of 462 MHz. Markers can be easily be placed at the minimum of each trace in order to obtain both frequency and level values for each of the notches. We can look at both of these traces simultaneously using the trace mem function. Here, the load to common path was measured first and stored in memory. This is shown as a blue trace. The measurement was then repeated on the high to common path shown in green. Note that markers can be placed not only on the active trace, but on stored traces as well. Note too that neither of these paths has any kind of bandpass response in the regions outside of the notch. Let's compare our band reject only duplexer to a combination band pass band reject duplexer. Here, both traces have clear positive peaks, showing the presence of one or more bandpass filters. The center frequency of each passband corresponds to the notch frequency of the opposite port. As before, 
we can place markers to provide more precise numerical information, and these values are displayed directly on screen as well. The next measurement we'll look at is isolation, which is the amount of attenuation between the low and high ports. Like port to antenna attenuation, this is also an S21 measurement. And as before, the unused port, here the antenna port, should be terminated. Ideally, no signals would pass directly between the high and low ports. That is, there would be infinite attenuation between them. In practice, port-to-port -port isolation will be highest at the notch frequencies of each port, but should also be significant at frequencies outside of the notches as well. Isolation can be measured in both directions, but transmit to receive is usually the more important measurement, since we're most concerned with keeping transmit power out of our receiver. In most cases, however, isolation measurements will have roughly the same results in both directions. Here is an isolation measurement made between the low and high ports with the antenna port terminated. We see that maximum port-to-port -port isolation occurs at the notch frequencies, but is still greater than 35 dB, and often much more, over the entire measured frequency range. The last measurement is standing wave ratio, SWR, or return loss. This is the amount of power reflected by either the low port or the high port, and hence this is an S11 measurement. Power is sourced by one port of the ZNB, and the amount of return power is measured at the same ZNB port. As before, the unused port should be properly terminated. Ideally, signals at the nominal port frequency would see a good impedance match with minimal reflected power. Measurement results are plotted as a function of frequency, either as standing wave ratio or as return loss. Typical duplexer values are a return loss of 20 to 30 dB, which corresponds to a standing wave ratio of less than 1.2. Keep in mind that this may also be somewhat different between the high and low ports. Here we see an S11 measurement on the low side duplexer port, shown both as SWR, which uses a linear scale, and as return loss, which uses a logarithmic scale. Note that regardless of which format we use, we see that the best impedance match occurs at the same frequency. Our minimum SWR of 1.045 corresponds to a maximum return loss of 33.2 dB. Let's end with a brief summary. Duplexers are three-port RF devices that combine two closely spaced signals onto a single antenna, a common scenario in radio repeater systems. There are three primary duplexer measurements. These are attenuation, isolation, and SWR or return loss. All three of these can be measured on the ZMB3000 using standard S-parameter measurements, either made on a single duplexer port or between a pair of duplexer ports. In addition, the ZNB supports a wide range of marker types and values, which can be useful in obtaining precise numeric measurement results. This concludes our presentation, getting started with the ZNB3000 duplexer measurements. If you're interested in learning more about duplexers, other network analyzer applications, or about the ZNB3000, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit us at rody-schwartz.com.